Hi, good morning, or early afternoon. So I'd like to tell you a little story of how I came to be here, because uh, normally this is not the kind of event I would, I would be at. I'm much more uh, uh, not an IoT or embedded systems guy, more of an infrastructure and data center guy. So I'm working currently for Mitocro, which is a subsidiary of Sony Semiconductor Solutions. And in particular, there's this new business unit that is focused on making smart sensors, you know, using the portfolio of CMOS sensors that Sony has. So the whole idea is to build devices, to bring to market easy to use sensing devices that are programmable, that have a very low barrier of entry for solution developers, and that preserve privacy by not sending data off of the edge, and eventually uh, you know, make it easy to develop and operate, and cheap to operate uh, applications that do sensing. So we can give some examples, but for example, you can imagine in the logistics uh, space, things like uh, tracking the container ID, you know, for containers coming in and out of a port, you know, stuff like that. So some of the challenges of embedded development that all of you know far better than me. Uh, and when we say embedded, typically we mean some application running on top of a real-time OS on a microcontroller, MCU. So it's not Linux, although I know there is such a thing as embedded Linux, but that's not mostly what we're talking about. So one, it's difficult. You pretty much have to code everything in C. Maybe that's not 100% true today, but that's uh, mostly true, especially if you want to do real-time workloads like ours. Uh, after deploying, it's not so easy to change the functionality. You've got packed, you know, uh, uh, packed up your firmware, deployed it, and then if the device is not connected, then you know, you're pretty much uh, stuck. Uh, there's no standard component model, so there's customization cost is high. The, typically, the portability isn't quite there because maybe some real-time OSs are POSIX compliant, sort of, maybe others are not. And then a lot of our problem is actually in the, in the safety and security space. So memory isolation is not there because the MCU doesn't have a real MMU, like your x86 processor. And the real-time OSs are not really designed for multi-user, so even if they're like POSIX compliant, the syscalls are not checked in the same way necessarily, right? So I'll, everybody here knows very well. So uh, I found this on somewhere in uh, that the number one source of security vulnerabilities is memory bugs, and these are exactly one class of bugs that's affecting us uh, quite a bit in this, in this space. The other point I wanted to make is why do we need to care about you know, polyglot development like with multiple uh, languages, especially for AI? Well, one, uh, one thing to keep in mind here is that the most popular languages are like Python, JavaScript, etc. Not so much uh, C and Rust. We all love Rust, but it is not that popular, generally speaking. And in particular among AI developers, the language that's most popular is Python, and the frameworks that they use mostly are also Python-based frameworks, so we really need to care about that as well. So some of our goals are to ensure safety uh, while enabling dynamic deployment uh, of applications on these microcontrollers, these MMU-less devices, reducing the developer, developer effort by supporting higher level languages, and component reuse, and generally speaking, enabling a more flexible QA process than, than we typically have in this kind of environment because you don't need to QA the entire stack up to the, same, to the same level if you have some isolation. And of course, portability across hardware platforms. So we developed this thing called TVP, Edge Virtualization Platform. Now I'd love to tell you that it's open source, but unfortunately it's not true yet. Uh, so hopefully in the, in the near future it will be. We're working on that. Uh, so what is it? It's like Kubernetes but for very tiny IoT devices. It does the lifecycle management of these workloads on, that run on these devices. The EVP agent is kind of like the kubelet. And, you know, drum roll, it, it leverages uh, WebAssembly, in particular WebAssembly micro runtime, to provide the isolation of the, uh, of the software modules. So it can be secure even on a real-time OS on top of an uh, MCU. Uh, roughly speaking, it looks like this, you know, hardware OS, native uh, libraries, uh, hardware abstraction layer, and then the different modules that implement various functions running on top of the uh, WebAssembly micro runtime with a bunch of interfaces, native host interfaces that we, that we developed. So this is kind of application specific to our domain, which is like I said, sensing, but we have like a sensor interface where you can configure things like the frame rate or other you know, ISP settings. 
communication interfaces, various communication interfaces. Uh, WASI-NN is like the standardized extension for doing uh, neural network inference um, and some sort of storage uh, functions. So these are like, you know, of course, none of these are uh, fully standardized except WASI-NN, but this is the in our, in our SDK. And more or less, this is what the developer wants to do with, with our setup. So the little white device on the, on the right that you see is actually a product. Uh, you can buy it online. And it has inside you know, a sensor, a DSP, and an MCU. You know, it's all packaged together. And you can program this thing with your uh, neural network model that does the computer vision, as well as your uh, application code you know, to run something uh, on the edge. So the developer can do this all locally using a CLI and an integration with, uh, uh, with the IDE, okay? So, and we've also done this kind of like visual programming thing. If you have a set of pre-built modules, you can connect them together. This is a Node-RED interface, which you may be familiar with. Uh, we just kind of hacked up the GUI to be able to, you know, string together our application from pre-built nodes. It, it was just a demo, but you can, uh, you can see it at our booth if you come by. And just one example I wanted to give you is this license plate reading app. It happens to be Japanese license plates since we're from Japan. Uh, and so the idea here is that the uh, developer was able to use uh, and reuse these uh, computer vision models that does the detection first of the license plate, then it does some other processing like cropping, scaling, and so on, and then another detection of the individual characters Finally, a kind of application logic that, puts the, that creates a string, essentially, out of those detections. And that's the output from the device. So the image never actually leaves the device. And I'll be happy to show you the demo uh, at our booth as well as another, uh, another demo. This is, that's it. Thank you very much.